we should probably skip all the lame jokes about concentration and things. Mostly just because I couldn't think of one. Um, concentration and chemistry is going to be part of our solutions unit. It can be, you can talk about this in, uh, for all kinds of different solutions, but we're going to focus on mostly the liquid based solutions. Now, when we talk about concentration in chemistry, there's actually three different ways that we can express concentration. And we're looking at two of these right now. Uh, one is called percent, and the other is called parts per million. And you'll find out that both of those are going to take enough of our, of our attention that it, it makes sense to have them be their own, uh, be their own video. So, let's think about this for a moment. What do we mean by concentration? It's always for us the amount of solute in a certain amount of solution. Not solute in solvent, although there's probably not a huge difference uh, from the what I've got to that, but it's important to remember that it's the amount of solute in an amount of solution. And the standard amount. So that's going to be kind of important too. Well, what if you don't have a standard amount? Well, then you're going to calculate things out and say, well, this is what I have in that standard amount. So it's not that hard. Amount of solute can either be a mass or a volume, or in some cases, a number of moles. Now, what we're looking at today is going to be masses and volumes. A number of moles come a little bit later. And then amount of solution is usually going to be a volume. It doesn't have to be, usually. And today, uh, most of the time, it's a volume. So, when we say concentration then, we're going to, in most cases, specify the units. So now it's not always explicit. What I mean by that is we sometimes have uh, another way of stating the concentration that hints at uh, the units that we need. Okay? It won't always be really, really obvious what the units are, but we will get used to that and we'll get comfortable with it. So percent, parts per million, and then the third one, which will be its own topic, is molar concentration, which I sometimes call molarity. It's kind of an older term, and I'm an older person. Uh, so I'll use that, but I'm trying to talk about molar concentration because that's the more modern thing. But understand that if you go out there and you, know, you go to university or wherever uh, and you start dealing with solutions, there's a lot of old people out there and they all talk about molarity. So being able to, to use both and know what you're talking about gives me a good excuse to not make a full switch. So percent concentration, let's start with that. We know how to do percent, take the part uh, over the whole. We did that with um, percent uh, composition, we did that with percent yield. You do that percent on your test all the time. Take the one piece, divide it by the whole thing, and then multiply by 100. So for us, the part will be the amount of solute, and then the whole will be the solution. So it should make some sense. And another way to think that through is the part over the whole equals some number over 100. So we're trying to standardize it to something out of 100. Both of these things mathematically would be equivalent. So we don't have to uh, worry about keeping track of two things. And that's kind of useful because if I had 1 over 25 or 142 over 840, all of those come out to 5%. So the reason that percentages are kind of useful is to say that all of these things are have something different, but they are also mathematically equivalent. They all represent the same concentration, the same amount of something. So for us, uh, concentration as expressed as a percent would be the solute part over 100 parts of solution. Now we're going to make it a little bit better than that, so don't worry about writing that one down so much. So we can have what's called a WV or weight volume percentage. That's going to be the most common one. So pretty much all the time, if it doesn't say so, it's going to be the weight volume percentage. Now you'd use that for a solid solute, salt, sugar, something like that, in a liquid solution, water. Uh, or salt water, I guess, or sugar water would be our solution rather than solvent. So then, for a weight over volume, that means I need mass over the total number of milliliters, multiply that by 100. And really what I'm after is I'm after that, uh, you know, how much would it be, let's say that 5 out of 100 that I had in the previous one. So, in other words, if I made this solution, 32 grams of salt in a total of 850 milliliters solution, ooh, what's the percentage there? I take the part that is solute, the part, the whole thing of solution, multiply by 100, and I get 3.76%. Too easy. Uh, try this one. Okay, pause it for a moment. Your moment's up, and we have that. Oh yeah, did you did you notice that that I gave you 1.6 liters, and it has to be in milliliters. So you take the total volume in milliliters, and then you do that, and we end up with a, a fairly small concentration. 
Moving on, we can do a percent concentration where we're talking to two volumes. If our solute is a liquid, then it's more convenient to measure volume. So, well, I do the same thing. I would take the volume in milliliters and divide it by the total milliliters. Okay. So 18 milliliters and 730 milliliters would be 2.46. Yes, you can round it off a little bit. I just kept them uh, a little bit longer here. And uh, if it were two solids, maybe you're making an alloy, a special kind of stainless steel or brass or something, then it's a solid solute in a solid solution, and I would have masses for both. And it would look like that uh, as a question, and it would look like that as an answer. 8%. That's it. That's all there is to it. So that's percentage concentrations in a nutshell. Now, what we try to do as much as we can, and we don't always, and that's okay, but we sometimes will put the little WW behind the answer, just so that if we don't have the context of the question, oh, it's 8% WW, oh, so that's how it, it was calculated out. Okay, second one today is parts per million. Parts per million is going to be used for very small concentrations, and we we'll usually write the units as ppm. So this is another one where the units are not written out explicitly, but we say parts per million, and then everybody knows, including you, everybody knows what that means. So very small concentrations. You're going to find that if you look at the side of a label on a bottle of water. If you were looking at water analysis for uh, you know bacteria counts in from city water, if they somehow publish that, or if you were looking at air quality. So if you really get a good uh, detailed weather report, they'll tell you the uh, parts per million on these things. So air is a solution, water is a solution, and then the solutes are going to be very, very small. And we're talking about milligrams in liters. So rather than milliliters in milliliters, milligrams, very small, in liters. So tiny little bits in a fairly slight big amount. And we would find the mass in milligrams divided by the total volume and that's going to be our, our concentration. Well, what if you don't have mass in milligrams? What if you have mass in grams? If you have mass in grams, then parts per million is probably not the concentration unit style you want to use. Percentage is probably your, your best bet. So, as a question, we've got that as our basic formula. So if you had 32 milligrams of solute and 2.6 liters of water, you put the solute over the liters, you get 12.3 you can write as parts per million. You notice that the unit here, milligrams per liter, that makes more sense, but the common term is parts per million. If you were to use milligrams per liter, I wouldn't be too upset about it because it is correct, but you need to know what parts per million are because I'm going to use them and everyone else is going to use them as well. And that's it. All there is to it. There's our first two concentration things in the can, all settled and ready to go. Uh, we'll come back to molar concentration another time. Talk to you in class.